underway at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Short kick. Fielded by the Gophers, taken out past the 40-yard line. That is Tommy Watson, I believe, on the carry. Indeed. So first and 10 for Minnesota at the 41. They trail the Hawkeyes 28 to 17. Well, here we go, second half with a squib kick like that. It puts Minnesota in good field position. And so far, we've seen a lot of offense in this game. And I have to expect we're going to see something similar here in the second half. Fasten your seatbelts again, guys. Tim Shea to Dawkins. Breaks it out past midfield to the Hawkeye 48 yard line. Plez Atkins brought him down. Well, at first it looked like they were stringing that play out pretty good, but again, with Darkens a quick acceleration, once he got out there to round that block, I mean, he's upfield and ran through a couple tackles and a couple good hits there, but uh, he, he delivered the blow more than anybody else. Three yards away from 100 for Chris Darkens. Nothing unusual for him to register a 100-yard day, and he's got it and more. Down inside the Hawkeye 30 yard line. Almost 20 yards on the carry for Darkens. Parker Wildeman brings down the visored one. Well, give Parker Wildeman some credit. He came from the down lineman position, 15, 20 yards downfield to make this tackle. Porter misses the tackle, and it's not really much of a criticism when you miss a tackle on a guy like this, but right there, an arm tackle just isn't going to bring him down. So Wildeman, in good pursuit, helps out. Again, it's Darkens, same side, out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Jason Henlon pushes him out. Yeah, they're starting the second half featuring Darkens. And you have to remember, the second quarter, he came off to the sidelines with a sore ankle, it looked like. But they looked at him on the sidelines, put him back in the game for a few plays before the end of the half. But it looks like he's back at full speed. Ryan Abraham is starting the senior from Cedar Falls, starting this second half, and he's in there number 96 at a defensive tackle beside Wildeman up front. Darkens in motion out of the backfield. Shade sets up, dumps it off to Rios. That's incomplete. It is not a fumble and recovery by the Hawkeyes. The ref Rios will rule it incomplete. Chuck Rios did not bring that one in. Damian Robinson was there. Aiden Fry with a play folder there in his right hand that he always has. He either carries it there or sticks it in the back of his trousers. A little screen pass attempt out there, but the Hawkeyes really on that one for, for good. Damian Robinson read it all the way, and I'm sure that's something they talked about at halftime. When they see Rios in the game, watch him for those short little pop, pop passes. Third and six at the 25. Rafael Cooper out of the backfield. Shane goes airborne again. He's got Rios at the 20-yard line. Great stop by Bo Porter and company. Look at all those Hawkeyes. Well, Bo Porter and company are there, but Aaron Osterman did a little blocking from behind, and they didn't see it. It was quite obvious from here, and the official was standing about five yards away, but we won't criticize the officials. It's fourth down and about a yard to go. In that first half, uh, Darkens had a minor ankle twist when you saw him come out of the game. They taped him up. He went back in, played some more, and he looks okay here in the second half. Fourth and one at the Hawkeye 20. Shade taps his left foot to get Tangan in motion. Goes across. He's got Osterman. Nice move on Bo Porter. Headed for the end zone. Doesn't quite get there. Out of bounds at the one-yard line. Nice move by Osterman after the catch. That Little really, guy. That really is. And Osterman's really a control type of pass receiver. He runs a real quick hitch pattern. You see it to the left hand of your screen? Makes a good move right here. Almost puts it in the end zone. So first and goal for the Gophers. Two minutes into the third quarter. Shade to Darkens, touchdown Minnesota.
So they didn't have to come a long way for that one. They started at the 41 yard line and it only took six plays, seven plays. And Darkens being the featured runner on it and he finishes it off here with this touchdown. Good blocking over there on the left side, caving a Hawkeye defensive line down to the inside. And now guys, takes... with the score 28 to 23 here, a standard extra point wouldn't do them much good, so they just might go for the two-point conversion here. Darkens has hit double digits in touchdowns this season. He's got 10 now. His second of the night, they will indeed go for two. Two wide outs either side, including Darkens in the slot on the left. He's the one in motion. Shade in the pocket, lofts it back of the end zone. A great grab by Tutu Atwell. Two-point conversion is good, and we've got a three-point football game. Same kind of play looked like, same kind of throw as he did with Rios on the touchdown, on the previous Minnesota touchdown of the last touchdown. You'll see it there. Atwell gets behind. Boone, number four for the Hawkeyes and Porter. A little touch pass. Very, yeah, very well thrown ball. But they had, they had Darkins coming out in the, uh, the flat in the motion there. Tonight's Hawkeye football game is brought to you in part by your local Ford dealer, home of the best-selling car and truck in America. Well, it took us uh, two minutes and 13 seconds to score eight more points. I... <laughs> I guess you couldn't expect anything else in this football game. 28 to 25, Iowa leads. Harmon with the kickoff. Not a pretty one. Out of bounds on the fly. Garrison not happy with himself. I don't think that was in the playbook. I'm sure in the back of his mind, though, he's thinking about Tavian Banks back there, and uh, Tavian's run back a couple of them back pretty well. We have well. a kick out of bounds. They elected to take the ball at the 35. First down. Jim Wacker has words for his kickoff man. Well, it's good offensive uh, field position for the Hawkeyes, similar to what uh, Minnesota had to start their first drive in the second half. So what do we expect? Who knows in this game? <laughs> You saw a shot of Hayden pouring over the plays there. Just pick anyone, Hayden. <laughs> Everything's working tonight for both teams. First and 10 at the 35. This is Shaw. Big hole. Out to the 49-yard line. Crawford Jordan with the tackle. He gets 16 on that run. That gets him close, doesn't it, Ron? Another six yards to get 1,000. Lots of blocking up front. Again, there's some great holes there that he can run through. And obviously, with uh, his uh, extra surge, he picks up a lot of extra yards on his own. But, wow, some great blocking. And uh, the backs are taking advantage of it tonight. Sean needs eight yards for 1,000. He's behind Kent Call in the eye. Matt Sherman changes the play at the line of scrimmage. It's Shaw. Going nowhere, the initial contact by Ed Hawthorne. You know, it's interesting. That's the first time we've called Ed Hawthorne's name tonight, and he is one of their stars. Minnesota co-captain. He's got some NFL potential in him, no doubt about it. 6'2", senior from St. Louis, but relatively quiet tonight, and that's a testament to the Iowa offensive line. That's a good point, Keith, because he is a, a great player. There you see him. Sheds, a, sheds that blocker and was able to get into Shaw before he even got the line of scrimmage, but uh, he is an outstanding player, but the offensive line's doing the job. His cousin, by the way, is Darrell Thompson, the former Minnesota running back. Second and 12 for the Hawkeyes. Sauer on the blitz gets to Sherman. He also got some help from Trevor Walker, but I tell you, nobody touched Craig Sauer. Now, this is Minnesota's style of defense. They like to put a lot of pressure on you, and they like to pressure the quarterback, and they weren't very successful in the first half. But they have seven guys coming this time, and one guy, Sauer, isn't picked up, and he puts a real quick pressure on. And there's four receivers downfield, four defenders downfield with those receivers. Nobody to throw the ball too quick. And Sherman had to eat it. 14-yard loss. Third sack of the year for Sauer. Third and 19. 
Sherman, long drop, plenty of time, over the middle, intended for Jasper, knocked away by Crawford Jordan, but I think we've got another pass interference call. The hanky is down. Jordan obviously won't agree if that is indeed the verdict. Well, with an unbiased eye, it looked like he might have hit him just a little before the ball got there, which will be a 15-yard penalty. It will still be third down, but uh, the Hawkeyes... But the Hawkeyes will have another chance to pick up that first. So it should be... Now the referees are going to uh, pull the ball away from the spot and... Make sure they put in the right place. Defensive pass interference. First down. First down, excuse me. Automatic first down. 15-yard penalty. So it'll be a first down right at midfield. Here's a look at it. Jasper, the intended receiver. Jordan coming up from behind. And just as he's about to make that grab, he kind of bumped him. We'll take it. First down, Hawkeyes on their own 49-yard line. Dean in motion, the pitch to Shaw. Good block by Kent Call inside the 45. Gain of seven. Justin Konzemius is there for the Gophers. Now that brings Shaw very, very close if he's not there already. Three yards away is what we get from 1,000 for the season. The attendance tonight, 53,340 here at the Hubert H. Metrodome, Humphrey Metrodome. And 65,018 is the record against Iowa in 1986. Second and four, Kent Call stopped right at the line of scrimmage. You know, you, you mentioned the attendance, Ron. It's uh, impressive that a Minnesota football team with an NFL team in town, in fact, they play obviously right here in this building, they go three and seven this year. They average over 40,000 fans a game. So Minnesotans really love their football. Vikings and Gophers. Speaking of Gophers, look at the tattoo there on uh, Doyle Cockrell's arm. That's a Gopher on the bicep and will stay there for life. Sherman, passing intended for Dean, incomplete. That'll bring up fourth and three. And that's a that quick out pattern that uh, Sherman is connected with Dean on a couple times here tonight, but that was well played. Defender that time was Terrence Blaine. He was right on Dean all the way. You're gonna get a chance to see it here. And in fact, if he doesn't lose his feet right there, he might have been able to intercept it. So gallery to punt, look at the hang time on that one. That sails out of the end zone. I thought we were gonna poke a hole in the roof on that punt. Gophers will start at their own 20 yard line, trailing Iowa by a field goal. We'll be right back. You're watching Hawkeye football on News Channel 2. Welcome back to the Metrodome, everybody. Hawkeye Football Live on News Channel 2. I'm Keith Blair along with Ron Gonder and Mike Riley. Hayden Fry's team is up 28 to 25. And Mike, you say if uh, there's any time for the Hawkeye defense to turn it up a notch, this is it right here. Well, they have to do it because I think Minnesota did in that last series we just saw. They came with the blitz a lot more often, put more pressure on Sherman. So the Hawkeye defense has to respond the same way. Darkens the lone setback. Shade plays off him and goes deep. Alan Osterman is wide open at the Hawkeye 40-yard line. Jackson in pursuit. He doesn't catch him. Touchdown, Gophers. Wow. What are we going to see next, gang? That's a great place for that, that type of call, though. Do a little play action, keep the linebackers in, but also you saw all the Hawkeye secondary take a little nap back there. And all it was is a pattern straight up the field by Osterman. He had a big game last week against Michigan, and I'll tell you what, he's coming back with another one. You'll see it here. Great fake off Darkins. Pretty pass. It's Osterman in stride. 
And there goes the six-foot senior from Zimmerman, Minnesota. 80 yards. That was a quick drive. And ripped his shoe off. Mike Schalberg's point after is good. Back and forth we go. The leader now in this football game, Minnesota. Thanks for that guy. 32 to 28, Gophers. Not knowing the defense of the Hawkeyes might have been in, but it looked like Chris Jackson might have been the man that should have been over there covering that. We'll maybe get a chance to look at it later. We'll take a timeout. Be right back to the Metrodome after this. Hawkeye football game on News Channel 2 is brought to you by Hardee's, the home of made-from-scratch biscuits for breakfast. With the scoring in this game, it may just take us right through to breakfast. <laughs> we'll be headed right to those biscuits. 28, uh, 32 to 28, Minnesota. Davian Banks, two yards deep. He's going to take this one out. 15, 20. Pass to 25. Well, good return by Tavian Banks, but just thinking in the first five minutes of this uh, second half, we got two big scores by Minnesota. You talk about taking the say it wind out of your sails. Hawkeyes needed to respond, and for sure they need to respond right now to slow that uh, momentum down that Minnesota's picked up. Because I tell you, you got seniors going out, 22 seniors, and a crowd here all excited. It's going to be tough sledding for the Hawkeyes unless we can take control. As an injured player, Minnesota in this game has three plays of 50 plus yards. Iowa does not have a play over 50 yards, this says. And Shade, so far, the Minnesota quarterback, is 16 out of 25 for 262 yards, no interceptions, and two touchdowns. And that catch by Osterman on the touchdown catch and run, his third catch of the day for 119 yards for him. Reggie Williams is the injured Hawkeye. Oh, we just got a glimpse of the pig. It's now up for grabs and exposed on the Hawkeye sidelines. I think the Hawkeyes better get going or that pig is going to have an eye for the other side of the field pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> Reggie Williams is up. That's good to see. The junior from Fresno, California will make his way to the sidelines. Doesn't look to be too badly shaken up. Another sponsor of tonight's game on News Channel 2, Bob Zimmerman Ford, BMW, Mitsubishi, Hyundai. They remind you that putting you first makes us first. 8.57 to go, third quarter. Hawkeyes down by four, first and ten on their own 27-yard line. This is Shaw. Out to the 30. Scott Slutsker in there, defensive or offensive a tight end again. It's good to see him back in the in the ranks. Win motion that time through a block and then outside. But one thing, if you really notice, the speed. It's almost like Minnesota's really picked up the tempo here with the way they're pursuing, the way they're hitting. So they really had a talking to at halftime, I'm sure. Second and seven for Matt Sherman and the Hawkeyes. Sets up at the 25. He has Demo Odoms on a crossing pattern. Out past the 45-yard line. First they had, down, Hawkeye. They had Odoms and Shaw set out as twin wide receivers out on the right side. And Odoms simply slanted back over the middle for that catch in the first down. It's Rodney Heath on the coverage. Another look. This is exactly the play, I think, last week when Odoms broke it for a touchdown against Northwestern, caught it over the middle, took off down the sidelines almost 50 yards for six points. First and 10 on the 46, Sherman to throw again. Wide open, Harold Jasper. Gets by one defender, taken down inside the 35. So well, that'll be an 18-yard play on top of a 16-yard pass play. Sauer's over there to make that tackle again. He's a pretty active linebacker chasing down those wide receivers. But another crossing pattern. You can see Slitzker going one way. And another Hawkeye receiver coming over underneath, Harold Jasper. So 
that dude, we've seen a lot of that short pattern and give the ball up to him short and let him run with it. Another first down, Minnesota 34-yard line, split backs behind Sherman. Throws it over the middle, another wide open receiver, Demo Odoms, he just might score a touchdown. Yes, sir. <laughs> Back and forth it goes, Hawkeyes regain the lead. And did he go by Juan Hunter, Number two, the defensive back who had the last shot at him and Odom's going down the sideline. Man, he gave it the old double clutch. That's it. He, burnt, he turned, put on the burners, but it's, again, that crossing pattern, and I'm sure that's something that the Hawkeye coaching staff saw in the films, that that's the type of approach that you want to make. Here's my old buddy Joe Bushman cheering a little bit. And into the end zone he goes. Extra point by Brian Hurley. Put the Hawkeyes on top by three. It's good. Total of 67 points in this football game. There is still seven minutes and 12 <laughs> seconds to play in the third quarter. You get seven, I get seven. You get three, I take six. You take the lead, I take the lead. Riley's got the fan yeah. out. There He's, it is again, though. This is a that's crossing pattern. It's wide open three times in a row here to uh, move the ball into the end zone. I tell you what, it's a big night for LBJ High School in Austin, Texas. They've scored four touchdowns tonight. Yeah. Cedric Shaw and Demo Odoms both have a pair. <laughs> Uh, we've all heard the saying in football games that are high scoring the team to have it last the ball that is wins and that's the way it's got to be I yeah. think tonight yeah. it well, might be midnight by the time we get to that point but uh, and the Hawks have had some drives there was a 73 yard drive and that was just four plays they had the 16 yard pass the 19 yard pass a three yard Shaw run and and the 35 yarder for the touch. So here we go again. Todd Romano set to kick off for the Hawkeyes. Rashawn Early, Raphael Cooper deep. And a quick kick. Rolls all the way into the end zone. We've seen that a few times tonight. Little seeing eye squibber there. Yeah. So Minnesota will start on the 20-yard line. They will go 80 yards for the touchdown to reclaim the lead. And <laughs> <laughs> There's Shade's numbers on the night, 16 of 25, 262 yards, a pair of scoring strikes, and he hasn't given it up yet tonight. This is Darkens. Diaco in pursuit and drags him down. John Hartlieb also there. I watched Diaco all the way in that play, and he did a great job of reading, but for sure John Hartlieb out of the defensive end, actually, but the outside linebacker does another great job of standing up, keeping his feet, making sure that the pursuit can come over and make that play, and you'll see it. Diaco, Diaco's got that quickness that he can run those backs down. We'll see if Fahala is also seeing action now for the first time since the Michigan State game. So he is now healthy for his final game as a Hawkeye. They dump it off to Chuck Rios. Wilderman makes the tackle. It will be third and long for Minnesota. We mentioned John Hartleib's name. And of course the Hartleibs go way back. His brother Chuck played 86, 87, 88. Jim, 89 through 92. And this is John's final game tonight. 11 straight seasons with a Hartlieb, at least one, <laughs> in a Hawkeye uniform. That era coming to an end tonight until the next generation comes along. Minnesota's three out of 10 in third down conversions here tonight. And they just, ooh, that's a fumble, folks. And the Hawkeyes have recovered. George Bennett comes up with the football. Chris Jackson is a Hawkeye that really put the hit on that receiver to pop that ball loose. And as you said, Bennett's back there to fall on the ball. Big turnover for the Hawkeyes here. One of the things that's kind of interesting to see is that we haven't noticed, you might be able to see here, Parker Wilderman 
Now you can't see it, but he's been dropping off actually in the pass coverage a lot. But Jackson, first he made the hit, then Pat Boone came and really put the hit on to get that ball loose. That was 2 2 Atwell, number one, that caught it, had the first down, and then promptly gave the Hawkeyes a first down on the Minnesota 40 yard line. Looks like the defense is turning it up a notch, Mike. It's a good hitting in that play. Yeah. Needless to say. Sherman calls an audible. It's Kent Call. Not much there. Minnesota today has had two fumbles and they've lost them both. And this one might be the big one as far as the Hawkeyes being able to turn this thing around and maybe get some more of that momentum back. But the way the momentum has been swinging back and forth, we might see two of those changes, two or more changes of that to get in this game. Clock running, just over five minutes to play in the third quarter. Split backs behind Sherman. They are Shaw and Call. Jasper and Dean, the wideouts. They'll give it to Cedric Shaw inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line, and does that do it? That should do it, folks. Cedric Shaw has broken the 1,000-yard barrier this season. Boy, the numbers that he could put up in the next two years, oh, he boy. is a sophomore this season. Mainly because you know a lot of that offensive line comes back. And I tell you, that nucleus of a great offensive line there, obviously the last few games that everybody's healthy, they've been awfully good this year. Third and seven for the Hawkeyes in Minnesota territory. Sherman, plenty of time. Oh, but pressure from behind. There's a fumble. Matt Purdy recovers. The hit was Manzer Williams. Boy, you could see that coming, too. Williams is chasing him down from behind, and obviously Sherman had no idea where he was coming from. And this is one of those that you just look happy to see the quarterback get up after he gets hit like this. Ross Verba had a hard time keeping LaManzer Williams away for that extra few seconds, and Williams got to him, so the Hawkeyes will punt. Gallery's punted three times with a 47-yard average, so he's punted well tonight. And here he puts one out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. How about that? He's really come on strong the last few games. Yeah. Highly praised heading into the season with what he did last year. In the first few games, he really struggled, but he's been a great punter in the last month. So it's just over three and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Minnesota will take over. 35 to 32 our score. Hawkeyes lead. Aiden Fry looking for career win 205 tonight. Chris Darkins bottled up at the 10 yard line. Gain of one, maybe two. Parker Wildeman on the stop. Well, Parker Wildeman's had a great game, and for a couple of things, I started to say earlier that a few occasions when they it's a passing situation, it looks like he steps forward and then drops back in the pass. But Take a look at what the Golden Gophers have done in 1994. They also had a midseason slump, much like the Hawkeyes. Losses to Kansas State, the Hoosiers, the Boilermakers, and Northwestern. They did beat Wisconsin in Madison. That was a big win. Played some great defensive games, and they played some real bad defensive games. Very Second and eight, and Shade keeps it for the first time tonight. He just might have the first down. Diaco Hartlieb on the stop. First down. You're going to see Parker Wilderman here. Now watch this. He backs off. Well, but you'll see him almost like a linebacker, but he gets blocked right there. And that's been a, a new scheme of defense that I don't think we've seen before, but it's, a, again, I think an effort for the Hawkeye defense to just rush three people, not anticipate the heavy pressure on, on the quarterback. But the main thing is to have an extra lineman or an extra person in that short zone across the middle for those passes that they like to dump off out of the backfield. Shade will throw. Going deep, and Kerry Cooks has an interception for the Hawkeyes. He breaks away from his would-be tackler, Ryan Thelwell. 
the intended receiver and takes it inside the 30-yard line. The freshman from Irving, Texas. Major undecided. <laughs> Shade's coming apart a little bit here. He, well, that ball was one of those high loopers. Exactly. It really hung up there. You can see it there. And Cook, though, does a good job of, of judging the ball and being back there and going up for it and then making a good uh, interception. And a pretty good run back here. Good oh, blocking. He, he can run it back. He uh, took a fumble back for a touchdown earlier in the season. With 26 yards on that interception return and now the Hawks have one of their great opportunities here taking over at the Minnesota 30 yard line. Ryan Terry is uh, back in the backfield for the Hawkeyes. Sherman not afraid to change the play at the line of scrimmage tonight. Get call. Bruises his way through for a few yards. Iowa's taking the ball over here in Minnesota territory now two series in a row after having not done that in any of the previous series of the games. They had to come a long ways for all of their touchdowns, but they had it at the Minnesota, Minnesota 40 on the previous series and had to punt, and here they are now on the 30, and Minnesota has turned it over the last two times, losing the fumble and the interception. And that's a good team has to take advantage of those types of turnovers, especially in that end of the field. When you're going on in, and let's see if the Hawkeyes can do it now. Anthony Dean in motion. Terry breaks to the outside. I tell you what, that's Craig Stower there again. He is having a heck of a game on defense for the Golden Gophers, and he's had a few big games. He was Big Ten uh, Defensive Player of the Week against Wisconsin in their win. I think, I think we mentioned earlier that he came to Minnesota as a quarterback and put on some weight. But you can sh certainly see his athletic ability as far as the quickness that he shows to get out there and chase Ryan Terry down in the corner. And Terry tried to get away from him with a stiff arm, and Sauer was able to fight through that. Third and eight on the Minnesota 27. Sherman complete. Scott Slutsker out of bounds at the 12-yard line. Slutsker with his first catch of the night. Rodney Heath on the tackle. Well, there's a good example of Matt Sherman, I think, as we talked a little bit earlier, but that's a real indication of him being able to look the field over and find his second or third or maybe the fourth receiver sometimes. That time he had to be, he was chased out of the pocket, but he was able to look downfield and have a good feel for where everybody was and was able to find that open man, Slitzker, for that uh, big first down. 15-yard play. Hawks are three out of six now in third down conversions themselves. Confusion in the backfield. Sherman tried to give it to Kent. But Sherman kept the ball and picked up four yards. <laughs> Three yards. Time running out here in the third quarter. We're at 30 seconds and rolling. Hawkeyes are up 35 to 32. They will be looking at a second and seven. Can you hear the way they call that last play in there? Sherman says, okay, let's run this one. Confusion on two. <laughs> I'll keep the ball and run with it. And perfectly executed, too. <laughs> Should be the last play of the third quarter. Pass. Tim Dwight is going to throw it back to Matt Sherman. Touchdown. Oh, oh. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh, oh brother. Oh, oh, brother. How yeah. about them, yeah. Hawkeye? Now, what hasn't twin yeah. Tim Dwight done this season? Yeah. Look at Steve that. Rose here now. Steve <laughs> Rowe, the assistant SID. What hasn't he done? <laughs> You're Mr. Stats. He's done it all. I, say, I tell you what, about 20 minutes ago, Mike, I asked you what we're going to see next, and you didn't That's call that is. one. And we're going to see it again. But here it is, like an end of round. <laughs> Boy, that wing back coming around. Look at Sherman. He, <laughs> Steve says he hasn't kicked it yet this year. That's coming later. They haven't let him kick it. Needless to say, that is Tim Dwight's first touchdown pass of the season. <laughs> <laughs> Point after good. Uh, uh, I tell you what, we might as well just sign off the air right now. Right? <laughs> no, let's not. We don't know what's coming next. Yeah. Hawkeyes up 42 to 32. We'll be back with the very end of the third quarter right after this. Live Hawkeye football on News Channel 2. Watch this. up by 
by 10 points. Rashawn Early bringing it back for the Golden Gophers after bobbling. They fumble the football, and Bo Porter has scored a touchdown for Iowa. Oh, my. Oh, my. <laughs> the most devastating play in football. Mick Mulherin caused the fumble. Rashawn Early coughed it up. And Bo Porter scores his second defensive touchdown in two weeks. Jumped on a block punt, and look, that, look that looks that. all. That says that's it all, doesn't it? That's it right there. When it rains, it pours for the Gophers. Here we go. First of all, he doesn't handle the ball real well here, but he gets, gets it there. Let's see the, the good hit. There's Mick. Yep. yep. Porter's there to run it in. Touchdown, Marquise. That was the last play of the third quarter. Hawkeyes can go up by 17 points. BAT. That's good. Forty-nine to thirty-two. The senior takes it home for six. Hawkeye football will return right after this. of Rosedale is 15 minutes away from returning to Iowa City. This game that has gone back and forth all night long has actually swung into the Hawkeyes' favor most recently. Two touchdowns and two plays. It's 49-32 to 32, Iowa. But Mike, you just said, this sucker ain't over. <laughs> Somebody once said it ain't over till it's over. I guess that's for sure in this particular game because what's to come next what a great defensive battle, though, that we are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Mick Mulhern from Linmar High School, the guy that put the hit on Rashawn yep. Early. Taking his frustrations out after uh, last night's heartbreaker to City High. Last week, it was Jason House from City High who blocked the yep. kick. And, and Porter. Bo, Bo Porter wind up, winds up with a touchdown last week, as he did just there. Tonight's defensive clinic is brought to you by Old Style. <laughs> Old Style Ice and your Eastern Iowa Old Style distributors. Let's play a fourth quarter, shall we? Another line drive kick. This is Rashawn Early. He's going to hang on to the football this time, although I shouldn't say that prematurely. Out past the 30. Flags fly. Shane Day takes him down at the 36. I think we had a big hit from behind of that that particular play. I think Joe Justice, sophomore or a cornerback for on the kick return team, put a big hit on one of the Hawkeyes. I, yeah, I wasn't sure who it was. I think it was Chris Jackson. On oh, Mulheron, excuse me. Two flags laying there, so I assume one of one of the two have to be right. What a fantastic rivalry this is. Teams come in with a combined record of 7, 12, and 1. Realistically, neither team going anywhere come bowl season. And we get a 49 to 32 football game. We had a block in the back on the return. First down. So, first and 10 at the 20. There's a replay of the return. Shade hands off to Darkins. Out to the 25-yard line. Jason Henlon on the step. I don't know about you two guys, but I'm exhausted. Boy, it is. <laughs> Well, you know, we talked about on the opening segment about crazy things happening, and usually when you talk like that, nothing happens. <laughs> well, this has turned out to be crazy. Yeah, you didn't jinx them tonight, Ron, that's for sure. No one in the backfield. Trips left for the Gophers. Shade, pressured by Webb, gets away. He's across the line of scrimmage. He's got to run it. Slides in at the 33-yard line. Safe. John LaFleur there to make the tackle or the touch in this case. 
Lafleur, the freshman from Jefferson, South Dakota, who's coming back along with a ton of other Hawkeyes. His, his father, Dan, was uh, an Iowa linebacker from 72 to 74. And he was a good one, no question about it. That last run by Darkins just before that play gives him 126 yards on 20 carries. Shade goes to the air again. Ooh, nice effort there by Greg Nelson, but not quite. Tried to bring it in with one hand. Chris Jackson on the coverage. Yeah, pass just a little bit overthrown. A little bit shorter. It was a perfect pass right down the seam between those linebackers that are dropping off. It's kind of interesting again. Oh, that's a Hawkeye. They usually end up with a three-man pattern. Almost a great catch. There's Johnny Hartley. What a great player he's been and what a great family that has been for the Hawkeyes. All great people, too. I'll tell you what. There's some of the real class folks you ever want to meet. Chuck, Jim, and John. 11 straight years. Shade calls. Time out. There were plans tonight, and I, I haven't seen the uh, the big scoreboard here this evening yet read as such, but there were plans tonight to put up on the Diamond Vision a congratulations to the Hartley parents for uh, putting together three very good football players. I was very, very grateful. 49 to 32, the Hawkeyes lead, 13.42 left in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. Five wideouts for Minnesota on a second and ten. Hawkeyes lead by 17, early fourth quarter. Shades pass incomplete. Intended for Johnny Woodson. Pasia Fahala applied the pressure on uh, Shade. Keeping our stats here tonight is Mike Grimm. He's uh, the WMT Radio overnight host. And Mike is from Manchester. He's a Luther grad, and he had a little observation here during the last commercial. He said at least a parking lot of blue license plates will head south happy. We hope that turns out that way. And he's awfully tired back there keeping all these stats. <laughs> oh, man, have we uh, worn his pencils out today. He's used to staying up this late, though, with yeah. that, that late-night call-in show. Alan Osterman's got a grab for the Golden Gophers. Catches it to 49 of Minnesota and takes it to the 49 of Iowa. Jason Henlon on the stop. Statistics so far in this ball game, Iowa has outgained Minnesota in total offense, but not by much. 423 yards to 415. Here's another look at the pass from Shade to Osterman. And Osterman does such a good job of that control type passing game. He found the seam between the two linebackers and was able to get Shade that popped that ball through there, pick up a good game. Darkens on a first and ten. Outruns Wildeman. Outruns Pohala. Porter and Jackson on the stop. Diaco there as well. Dodge and your local Dodge dealer are sponsoring tonight's Hawkeye football game on News Channel 2. Stop in and visit the friendly Dodge dealer near you. You know, you mentioned Parker Wildeman. There's another guy along with Diaco who has played a lot of downs for Iowa. That's for sure. And a play like this for Darkens, that's perfect. He's started everything going to the left, and then they try and seal everything off from the weak side and let him cut back against it, which in this particular case worked for him quite well. Pick up the first down. They move those other players in and out of that defensive line, but seldom does Wildeman come out of the ball game. They've got 98 Webb in there with him right now, 55 Lafleur, and 91 Puhala. First and 10 on the Hawkeye 39. 12 and a half minutes left to go in the game. Shade to throw. Complete to Johnny Woodson. Dragged down out there by Plez Atkins, the freshman. Well, you mentioned Wildeman, and there again, one, one more time. He, this time he doesn't hit and drop back. He rushes the passer. He's in there spinning. You go after the passer. He does a great job. Almost gets to him, but gets ridden out of the play. But I'll tell you what, you're right. He, he puts 150% in every time. There's Shade's numbers, 309 yards for uh, two touchdowns and then one interception. Clock running under 12 minutes now. Second and three. Darkens. First down. And a bunch more to the 22-yard line. Bo Porter on the step. 
Porter's got a bright future in front of him, the senior from Newark, New Jersey. Signed a pro baseball contract with the Chicago Cubs organization. So uh, he's got a lot of options. He told me earlier this week he's going to sit down, talk with Hayden Fry and Bobby Elliott, the backfield coach, and get an honest appraisal of his football abilities. Makes the stop there on Darkens. First and 10 on the Hawkeyes' 22-yard line. Shade rolls out and is inch in pursuit. And Shade has got a man inside the five-yard line. That's Matt Ream, the tight end from right here in St. Paul. And I think that's maybe his first catch of the day, but that's a great play by Minnesota. Good play action. Faking out most of the Hawkeyes thinking that it was going to be a run play. And as Shade rolls out, he's been able to turn it upfield and show uh, see the field real well. And he picks out Ream down around the five-yard line. 19-yarder. Clock running. We're at 11 minutes now to go in the game. First and goal at the Iowa 3 for the Golden Gophers. Darkens. Touchdown. Three words can sum that touchdown up. Not so fast. <laughs> those, those Not blue so license fast, plates. Talk guys. That's right. Those blue license plates are still in the parking lot. Happiness yet to be determined, but All Iowa right. still leads. It's the old story at the card game. The winners sit there, laugh, and tell jokes, and the other guys are saying, deal them. Yeah, deal them. yeah. <laughs> so that was an 80-yard drive. The extra point will make it a 10-point ball game. Mike Schauberg. Good. 49 to 39, our score. 10 minutes, 56 seconds to go as Chris Darkins pulls the Golden Gophers to within 10. We'll be right back. Running back for the Golden Gophers has pulled Minnesota within 10. 88 points scored in this ball game. It's 49 to 39, Iowa. Tavian Banks at the one. Yeah, the 88 points tonight in this series is the most, what is this, Mike, since 1903 when there were 75 points scored between the two teams. You remember that game. Oh, sure. <laughs> you and Tate did that one, I think. Floyd was just a pickling then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure, Tate was here. <laughs> Tate Cummins we're talking about for anybody that doesn't know, the longtime sportscaster at WMT before I arrived. Tonight's game is brought to you in part by U.S. West Direct. First and 10 on the 20 for the Hawkeyes. It's Ryan Terry. Gains five. You know, one of the things is we sit here and enjoy this game because it is really a, a, a great spectator's game, but you got to remember, those guys are out there in the field for three hours now. They've yeah. been up and down the field a lot. And even though they're young guys that are in great shape, there's some people that are getting really tired. And you just hope that there's no injuries because of that, but you can bet that they're uh, dragging pretty good. A lot of points in this ball game, and I think more to come. Just a prediction going out on a limb here. Second and five for the Hawkeyes. Just can't call on the sweep. There to make the stop, Dan Lasanti. Under 10 minutes to go. Good, nice. good pursuit there by San Lanny. Could get over there really quick. Because Sandy doing a good job. The scoreboard says third and 28, but uh, that's not what it is. It's third and six. The graphic is correct. Now they've got things in order. Chairman having trouble getting everybody to hear what's going on. Harold Jasper just shy of the first down. I don't think they're going to get it. Well, Harold Jasper is now the fourth all-time receiver in yards for Iowa. He passed Quinn early tonight. And Jasper, uh, before that catch, had 1,857. Yeah, that one they're going to have to give him probably five, but he's going to be about half a yard or a foot short of the first down. He now trails Dave Moritz, who's the next guy in front of him, and he can be caught. 
In this game, yeah, yeah, he can be cut. <laughs> uh, Harold Jasper's had a, a fantastic career and a real classy leader for this football team. That's how close it was, folks. Six inches, maybe. Oh, and the Hawkeyes are going to go for it right now. What do you think about this call, Mike? Well, I'll tell you what, 9-13. It's a lot of time yet to play, but I try it. Steve Wright, I was just going to say that to you, Steve. I think they're going to go up and try and draw him offside, and if they don't get it done, probably kick the ball. But Fourth and inches. never know. On their own 29-yard line. Oh, that's what they're trying to do, and almost pulled it off. Sherman barking every play in the playbook. Time out. <laughs> <laughs> That was uh, Good call, Steve. That's a new <laughs> record in uh, the Iowa Minnesota series for a long count. <laughs> Page three of your audible book says Matt tells Matt, we almost did it. Good try. It is interesting, though, because they, they take a timeout so they don't have to take a delay a game five yard penalty, which erases the timeout off the board. The Hawkeyes now have two, and Minnesota has two. And the way this game is going, you might want that extra timeout yeah. before it's over. Clock stop with eight minutes and 49 seconds to go in the game. Hawkeyes will be punting from their own 29 yard line. That is Aaron Osterman, deep for Minnesota. Matt Sherman, 14 out of 19, had another great throwing night, 258 yards, two touchdowns. Ooh. Just got that one away. Osterman at the 22. Tim Dwight and <laughs> Price on the coverage. Yep. Who would you expect but Tim Dwight down there? He's down on every coverage. Throws the blocker aside and then he's a little off balance, but he's able to regain his balance and make the tackle. So Minnesota takes over with just over eight and a half minutes to go in the game, trailing by 10. If you're just joining us, where were you? 88 <laughs> points have been scored in this football game. Darkens the lone setback. Tangan in motion. Pump fake by Shade. Going deep, intended for Osterman. In uh, right between uh, Bo Porter's hands. Had a chance at it, but a little frustrated with himself, but he had to get way up for that one. Well, there was that pump fake, fake again that they ran for a touchdown to Osterman earlier. For that time, Damian uh, Robinson was there, as well as Martin Porter, and they were back in good shape covering that, and Porter was close to intercepting it. Second and ten. Darkens, Tangan, the lead block. Out past the 35. Chris Jackson on the tackle. We talk about even numbers in this one. Sorry, Mike. Sorry. Hayden Fry is uh, eight and eight against Minnesota as we take a look at the uh, run by Darkens. Jim Wacker is one and one against Iowa. The Hawkeyes are three and three in the Metrodome. Five hundreds across the board. Of course, Minnesota has the edge in the battle for Floyd, 35 to 22. The pig has changed residence 25 times. Third and three. First down to Osterman. Nice play by Minnesota. Atkins on the tackle. Well, I always got Jeremy McKinney in there now on the defensive line. He hasn't played much tonight. I don't know if he's been in before. And he's the big guy who was playing on offense, a true freshman who's an offensive tackle and has been really helping out on defense. They expect him to go back to the offense. Darkens on the carry, big hole into Hawkeye territory. 
down to the 39-yard line. Diaco and Pat Boone are there. Twenty-yard pickup for Darkins that time, and he is racking up the yardage here. He is. And he raises his hand to say, "Let me give you out of this game for a short time because he's tired." Yeah. But he's the kind of guy you got to keep giving him the ball because when he has an opening like that, there's John Hartley almost making the tackle, but can't quite hang on. But he's that just that type of guy. You got to keep him in there because he's going to break plays like that for you. He is just a junior, so if. Uh... He sticks around. He could be back. 175 yards on the ground for Darkins. Three touchdowns. Came in seventh in the nation in rushing. Shade to pass on first and ten. In and out of the hands of Raphael Cooper. And guess who was back there covering on Parker passes? Parker Wildeman. <laughs> That's been interesting, that type of defense that they're playing. But I tell you, I think it's, it really helped just simply because Minnesota likes to run so much of that short across in, the, in front of the uh, linebacker, uh, the short zone patterns. Rollman on the floor, 56 and 55 inside, and in a sense, number nine and 98 Webb on the outside on that defensive front four. Under seven minutes to play. Shade complete with a little help from Rios to Johnny Woodson. Right run. <laughs> <laughs> The old tip play. Yeah, that was the uh, you tip it to me, I catch it play. Yeah. And it worked. Here it is. You see it again. By design, little tip. You be, you got it. Get going. Sure. Whatever works. <laughs> well, so here come here come the Golden Gophers. They're on the 20 yard line. First and 10, 6.20 to play. Hawkeyes lead by 10 points. It's Raphael Cooper on the carry. Picks up two or three. It's the final game of the season for the University of Iowa Hawkeyes. They will open things up in 1995 on September 9th at home against Northern Iowa. That ought to be an interesting one at Kinnick. Aiden Fry checking the list. Second and seven on the 17. This is Darkins. Right. Oh boy. He gave Jason Henlon a jolt there. The Iowa linebacker. That'll bring up third and short. But Darkins, we he, talked about him so many times here. As far as the way he turns it up, but he'll lower his head and he'll pop these people, as you're going to see again. Oh. <laughs> third and short on the Hawkeye 11. Make it third and one. Tangan stumbles in motion. Darkins. Stopped now, you, by Chris Webb. Have you ever seen that before, guys? <laughs> I mean, that, Keith, that's going to make your uh, your funny reel right there. Uh, cue up the Sunday funnies, Jason <laughs> Elliott. Uh, Just as he uh, taps the quarterback on the rear to yeah. tell him he's going behind him, yeah. he stumbles. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, you uh, don't think his buddies are going to work him over oh. that in the next few weeks. <laughs> They're going to measure Mark. this one, folks. And he's only a sophomore. He has two more years of that. Dangan as red as that jersey right about now. First down. And goal. With exactly five minutes to play. And the Hawkeyes clinging to a 49-39 to lead. Good shot of the coach. Tangan makes it across the line with ease this time. Chris Darkins inside the 10, down to the five-yard line. Diaco makes him stumble just enough to come down. With that little ankle biter on him, just enough to bring him down. He may have gotten in there otherwise. Well, that's right, and there's that sprint draw type of play where they show motion coming this way. 
and he cuts back against the grain. You saw a good block out there in the corner, but uh, that Diaco does a good job coming over and tripping him up. Aiden had told us after a few games this season that the Hawkeyes had a hard time tackling. Bobby Diaco has never had any difficulty making a tackle. Second and goal at the five. Shea to pass. Plenty of time? No, I don't think so. Chris Webb and Ennis Inge bring down the Golden Gopher quarterback. Well, Ennis Inge was there. And two Hawkeyes struggling to get loose and get in there and get on him. Shade had plenty of time, as you're going to see, but just as he makes his quick turn to the left, bang, Ennis Inge is right there to blast him. Good spin move by Billy, huh? The other thing you have to give credit to in that play is some great coverage downfield. They had four receivers out into the pattern. In fact, one of the backs, I think, even was out. So five-man pattern, and it was well covered by the Hawkeye secondary and linebackers. Third and goal at the 11, three minutes, 15 seconds to play. Hawkeyes lead by 10. This is Shade, incomplete. Intended for Greg Nelson, Bobby Diaco on the coverage. That'll bring up fourth down. A little better bit of pressure coming in that time on Shea, but good coverage again by the linebackers and specifically uh, Bobby Diaco that time. Ball a little thrown a little bit behind the receiver, but Diaco was there to make the play. You need to score twice if you're Minnesota. So they go for the field goal here with three minutes and nine seconds to play. 23, 28-yard attempt. Hit the pole. It's good. <laughs> He hit the right, right upright and kicked in. Sure did, Mike. 49 to 42. Just over three minutes to play here at the Metrodome. Live coverage of Hawkeye football on News Channel 2 will return after this break. Four points scored in the first quarter, 21 points scored in the second quarter, 36 points scored in the third quarter, 10 points scored in the fourth quarter. That all adds up to Iowa 49, Minnesota 42. Ah, we're having some fun now, aren't we, Charlie? <laughs> now we're. Huh? Yeah, this has, been, this has been great. I mean, what, what more do you want to do on a Saturday night? Yeah. <laughs> Keith Flyer, Ron Gonder, and Mike Riley with you. The interesting part of it is we know there's a number, of, I think there's 21 seniors on the Iowa team. I think there's 22 seniors on the Minnesota team that will play their last game. What a memorable game that they're going to have to take home with them and prepare the rest of their lives. And I hope they all have it on tape. I'll tell you what, what a football game. VCR is rolling back in Iowa City. Kickoff by Harmon. Out of bounds. At the five. Yeah, that's a break for the Hawkeyes to bring it out to the 35-yard line and get them started in some good field position. You can bet Minnesota is going to come after them. They're going to become blitz with about everything they can. And the Hawkeye front line, they've been doing a good job all day they long. Free kick out of bounds. They select to take the ball at the 35. First down. But now it's up to that offensive line to really come forth one last time here this season. And knock people backwards and pick up a couple first downs. Two timeouts for remaining yet for Minnesota, two for Iowa. So they're going to have to do a job. Oh, here's Batman on the field. I've seen it all. Look at this. Look at this. He's going to get him. He's going to get him. He's, He's at, at the, the 20. 20. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. It's Iowa Batman in for the touchdown. <laughs> See, I told you to do a little play-by-play -play tonight, Ron. Hey, yeah. We don't encourage that behavior, by the way. Absolutely but not. We are entertained by it. He won't see the end of this ball game. Mike, That's Mike, right. Mike Grimm, is he from Manchester? That, that guy? <laughs> I think it is Mike Grimm. <laughs> Pitch to Cedric Shaw. Couple nice moves. Takes a huge hit out at the 36-yard line. I think they did keep the clock going, though. And that's the important part now for the Hawkeyes to stay in bounds, keep the clock going. Gain of one. Ed Hawthorne on the stop. And the clock is rolling. 
2.45 to play. Even though this isn't a big gainer, this is a great play by the Hawkeyes to pitch it and get outside, knowing that they're going to try and pinch everything, anticipating the Hawks coming up the middle. Beat up a little bit of clock, and he did, didn't get out of bounds, so the clock keeps running. That was Shaw's first carry, wasn't it, since he hit the 1,000? Oh, he's just over it. Second and eight. The give is to Cole. Out to the 40-yard line. That should bring up uh, third and five. Good Time art. out on the field. Yeah, Two minutes and 11 seconds to play. Jim Wacker over there calling his players in. To, they're going to have a little set two to determine what they're going to do as far as what kind of pressure they want to put on the Hawkeyes. I'll tell you what, that's a good hard run by Paul, knowing that he had to stay in his feet, eat up some clock, and he was able to do it. Bob Zimmerman Ford, BMW, Mitsubishi, Hyundai, sponsor of tonight's game, reminds you that putting you first makes us first. Do the cheerleaders still do the push-ups for all the Iowa points? Remember they used to do that, do they? You're talking about the players being tired, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some discussions about that during the offseason after a game like tonight. Wow. A lot of strategy being talked about on both sidelines now. There again, you see Jim Wacker with his defensive group, Minnesota. Aiden Fry over there with his offensive group. There's some tired young men sitting right there, I'll tell you. Indeed. The offensive line for Minnesota. These guys are going to go take that shower and collapse. I think they put Floyd back in the box, haven't they, guys? I think Floyd is tired. Floyd's even tired. Big sweat, you know. So here we go, third and six on the Hawkeye 40. Two minutes, 11 seconds to play. Iowa leads by seven. Sherman will throw. Oh, my goodness, almost intercepted by Justin Konzemius. Which Hawkeye was he going for on that play? I'd... I think it was Ken Call out there in the flat. Defensive end Jerome Davis. Number 59 had him by one leg. Is either that or Odoms was out in the flat area, but boy, oh boy, that's uh, a big defensive play. Yeah. So the Hawkeyes punt with two minutes to go in the game. Aaron Osterman breaks away from Demo Odom, runs. <laughs> Who else? Tries to get by Tim Dwight, but doesn't. Uh, oh. I should know better than to say runs by Tim Dwight. It just doesn't happen. He caught him at the last second. He went the opposite way of Dwight. I think he had enough of him for the day. Look at this. Here's a replay of Matt Sherman almost being down there. But look oh. at that. Oh, wow. There's Ken Call. I don't know if he's trying to get to Ken or he's trying to get it to Odoms, who was a little further down the field. But as he was going to the turf, obviously wasn't a good pass. Under two minutes for Minnesota. They start on their 23-yard line. Shade under pressure, dumps it off. Chris Webb, Billy Ennisinge, Parker Wildeman all there. Well, that's a great effort by the defensive line, and for this reason, they were trying to do just that, let those linemen get through there and dump the ball off on the screen pass, but they accelerated so quickly that they really didn't have a chance to set that play up the way they wanted. It's a great, great effort by those down linemen up front. One minute, 48 seconds to play. Minnesota has one timeout left. They're going with five wideouts again. Nobody in the backfield. Shade to pass, brought down from behind. That is a huge sack by Parker Wildeman, the senior from Cherokee, Iowa. Boy, what a great job and a great call on that one. It was a loop defensive pattern, a trick up front where the outside man came crashing down. Wildeman came out the outside almost untouched. You're going to get a chance to see him. Look at him go to the outside, coming in from the left side now. Bang. Great, great play. 
Chris Webb really set that up with a good hard charge down from the right end to let him circle outside there, make the play. Minnesota needs a chunk of yardage here on third and 18. Over the middle, Osterman can't hang on. That'll bring up fourth and long for and Minnesota with a minute and six seconds to play. It was everybody out for a pass that time. Nobody in the backfield. Everybody all spread out. Well, I'll tell you what, again, Wildeman in there really putting some pressure on it. You know, you just can't believe how tired those guys are, but what a great effort these last two plays. Wildeman again came in that circle, and he would gave him put enough pressure on, I think, to just cause a problem with a good pass. That front four has played most of the second half. Webb and LaFleur and Wildeman and Innes End. Shade over the middle, complete to Rios. Bobby Diaco makes the stop at Big the 25-yard line. They're eight yards shy of the first down. And that was a fourth down, and that'll be it. The Hawkeyes all have to do is snap the ball a couple times and put a lot of fans going home happy. And obviously a football team of the Hawkeyes coming back like they did in the second part of this year, playing some excellent football, and what an exciting way to finish a 94 season. And look at there. Look at there, Ron. They got the helmet on. Up, oh, you can't. They got oh, the helmet sure, on. Sure, huh? sure. Floyd. Up. Oh. Floyd's a football player. And one of the players just stood over and kissed him. A Boy. perfect uh, fit, by the way. Well, Floyd. you did that when you when you played at Iowa. I yeah, remember you telling me about that. It was an that. outside game, and God, was that cold. Oh. Cold pig. You know, you're not supposed to kiss, you know, put your tongue on a bubbler, or, you yeah. know, when it's that cold. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see if Fahala's having a great time over there. One minute to play. Hawkeyes killing the clock yeah. here at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Well, Minnesota will call timeout, take that last timeout with 40 or 56 seconds to go. And what can you say as we wind this one down, Heather, that what a great, great football game by two teams that... You know, they're both down in the second division of the Big Ten. What do they have to gain? Let's get the season over with and go home for the, the holidays. But I'll tell you what, you got to take your hats off to the coaching staffs of both of these schools and uh, the players to put forth an effort like this and put on a display of football like they did tonight. And the pig pen will remain in Iowa City. Floyd's happy. I know he is. <laughs> He's beaming. We're still over there. Hayden Fry celebrating with Jefferson Bates. This football team will finish their last four games 3 0 and 1. Yep. After a five game losing streak right in the middle of it all. What a great way to end. Talk about uh, four building blocks for the 1995 season. And except for Purdue, a carbon copy of last season. And when you think of that, you got to look at Hayden Fry and his coaching staff to what they've done to keep that team together. You know, when you lose five in a row, that gets people down and down in a hurry, and you start second guessing yourself and what you're doing and all that. But two years in a row, we've seen Hayden and Fry keep that team together and come back and really play solid football, which obviously is a real tribute to him and the. The, uh, the just the classic people that he has on campus down there. Well, you know, we've been talking about what an offensive game it's been, but the Iowa defense has caused three fumbles. Two of them turned into touchdowns, and they also had one interception. <laughs> that should do it. The University of Iowa Hawkeyes There's retained Floyd. possession of Floyd of Rosedale. There's Buhala, I think he was giving Floyd a little bus there. <laughs> you know, you think about that. Uh, you know, just think, you know, when we're at the age we're at now, but you know, that's pretty important. I don't know how many people really think of that, but when you have that, whatever symbol that might be, is saying, hey, we're, we won the battle of the, the border, and there you can take that home for one more uh, year of the Floyd being in the hands and ownership of the Hawkeyes. That's great. There goes Floyd. He's on the shoulders. That's Buhala who's got him there. That shows you the difference of the 30-some years, Ron. When we carried it off, it took three or four of us to sure. try it, but we couldn't do it. <laughs> guys we got one guy now doing guys it. Guys weren't into weightlifting. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Billy Innocent just helping out a little bit, but not much. Oh, Buhala's carrying most of that pig. <laughs> 
The oh. yeoman's work, yeah, for Hosea. All 94 pounds of Floyd. This Hawkeye football team did not want to finish below 500. In their history, they have not done a lot of that, and they won't do it this season as they break even with a win over the University of Minnesota. Hayden Fry says, let the seniors carry that pig because I don't want any of my juniors getting hurt. <laughs> we don't want no smash feet over carrying a pig. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Look at Alan Osterman at midfield. Yeah. I don't know if we'll be able to get a shot of that, but uh, the fine Minnesota wide receiver. There's Bill Brazier, the defensive coordinator and assistant head coach, getting a hug from Hayden Fry all the years those two have been together, and they have been through a lot. Final score tonight from the Metrodome. Iowa, 49, Minnesota, 42. We'll be back to wrap things up right after this on News Channel 2. back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis. Ron Garner's doing a little bit of everything. Oh, listen, this was a fast change, a fast change. They're hey, moving those drink cups here as we go on the air. We needed a lot of that. Uh, I'm hoarse. I don't know about you two, but what, what a fantastic football game, Mike. Unbelievable game, and it, what a great one to sit and broadcast. I'll tell you what, we've done a lot of them in the past, but this one probably takes the cake as far as excitement after excitement after excitement. What could you couldn't relax and you're right. I've bought horse by now. <laughs> this is my play by play debut uh, covering the Hawkeyes and uh, I'll take this one. I will indeed. 49 to 42 the final score for Mike Riley the 1963 All-American and Ron Gonder the sports director at WMT Radio. We've got to do this again next hey. time guys. Huh? Great. Great. <laughs> Hawkeyes retain the pig. They beat Minnesota 49 to 42. Good night everybody. is brought to you by Old Style, Old Style Ice, and your Eastern Iowa Old Style Distributors. By Bob Zimmerman Ford BMW Mitsubishi Hyundai, putting you first makes us first. By Hawkeye Banks of Iowa, and by Dodge and your local Dodge dealer.